So I'm Ofer, I run developer relations at Victara. And um, one of the things uh, you know, I want you to kind of uh, take away about me is I'm actually one of those unique people who used uh, LLMs before they were kind of more cool like they are today. So I started using GPT when it was in version two. Uh, it was fun times to see how it improved, uh, um, progressed, I'm sorry, from GPT-2 to GPT-3 to GPT-4, and it's not been a linear you know, kind of uh, progression. It's been really explosive like, like we see today. So I expect uh, GPT-5 and its equivalent in other companies will, will also blow our minds you know, later this year or next year. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk about RAG today or retrieval augmented generation. Um, for those of you who, who don't know what it is or haven't heard another talks uh, last couple of days, Reg really helps uh, LLM focus on facts. And so, if you have uh, a user query, and uh, oops, why is that happening? Sorry. If you have a user query uh, in regular LLM, you just ask the LLM to answer the question, and based on its knowledge, it just gives you the answer. And whereas with Reg, kind of at a very high level. Um, there's facts that are being retrieved from your own data. So you give it a data set, a corpus, and there's a retrieval step that actually takes, uh, matches the, the query to um, facts from the data, p uh, picks up the best facts, and gives them to the LM, essentially telling it, given this query and this context, can you please respond to this query in the best possible way? And that's, that's why we're augmenting the knowledge of the LM with additional facts. So it's kind of like a open book test as opposed to a closed book test is a good analogy I like to, to use. Um, and so a lot of use cases for that very commonly is a chatbot or question, question answering interface um, and things like that. Now, um, what do we do at Victara is interesting. Uh, you can build RAG in a lot of different ways, but what we do at Victara is called RAG as a service. So we took all the pieces, and those of you who have tried to build or heard talks about RAG, there's a lot of details in the middle that you have to do yourself. You have to take the documents or the text and extract the text from the PDF or whatever form it comes in. You have to do chunking and uh, embedding and put it all in something called a vector database. You have to um, create a whole retrieval engine to pull the data in query time. A lot of complexity inside, and the one way I think about this is we're like a RAG in a box, um, and all we've done is uh, encapsulated all this complexity for developers inside an API. So you take the data from its source, you index it through the indexing API, it just goes and does all the, the work needed in the background uh, on the service. And then when you build an application, uh, you run a query, you run it through the Victor API, you get a response back, and you show it to the user. So it's very, very simple just using the API. Um, all right. So um, why is retrieval augmented generation a good thing? Uh, well, it augments, as I said, the LLM with your own data. So if you want to focus your application on a particular set of data that could be private in a lot of cases, could also be just stuff that you want to control and make sure that the chatbot or whatever application responds in a particular way. Uh, so you do that. It also reduces hallucinations. So hallucination is a big problem with LLMs today, um, and that helps with that. Um, reg outputs are also explainable, so we'll see later on in the demo, uh, but it, you can provide citations, uh, and the citations are links to where the facts that we just gave the LM, and so as a user interface, you get this response, you get these citations, and the user can go and click and explore more, which gives this level of trust, which is really, really helpful. Um, of course, um, you might hear about uh, fine-tuning and retraining and things like this. One of the nice things about a RAG, you don't need to fine-tune. There's no GPUs involved uh, on the user side. It's very simple in that sense. and It's not as expensive as fine-tuning might be. Um, and one of my favorite things is that you can actually do um, access control with RAG. So imagine that your documents have, you know, it's an enterprise setting, you have a lot of documents, and um, some of them are from the HR department, which not everybody might have access to see. And so you can take, in real time when you run the query, you can filter and say, please take those facts, but filter out any facts that are not, that a person is not permitted to see because of their role uh, in the company. And then the response will only be beyond the facts that you provide. So that's a really, really useful uh, feature as well. Okay, so I talked about hallucinations. I just wanted to share with you my 
one of my favorite examples uh, that uh, still to date uh, holds water, even though they try to like uh, kill some of these examples all the time. But um, did Will Smith ever hit anyone? And of course, Jet, uh, GPT 3.5 in this case says no. He's a you know, pretty pretty decent person and. No, um, and we all know what really happened, right? Uh, is this so? Um, so that's a hallucination. And again, in this case, because GPT three point five was trained on a certain data set that did not include those facts and that does not know of this information. So augmenting the information is really helpful. Um, and then I want also to mention because we focus uh, to service our customers a lot on reducing hallucination with the rag, we created this thing called HHEM which is a use hallucination evaluation model. And um, this model essentially measures uh, the likelihood uh, of hallucination for different LLMs. Actually, let me rephrase that. It detects hallucinations in real time, but you can use it also to measure hallucinations of different LLMs. So here, this is our leaderboard that has become really popular uh, recently it uh, shows different hallucination rates for different uh, types of commercial and open source models. Um, you can access this model, it's open source for free and use it in your own application if you like. It's available on Hugging Face here and the leaderboard is as well. And I, I'll be amiss not to mention that yesterday, or oh, two days ago, we actually announced a HAGM v2, um, which is integrated in our platform and has a bunch of kind of improved capability, like it's a, it's a calibrated score, it's multilingual, and a bunch of other things, uh, based on the same idea, but just much easier to use it because it comes back with our query API in there. Um, so that's HHEM if you're interested. Um, and now uh, I was gonna do a live demo, and you know, let's see if the demo goes are with me today, but I wanna show you how to build, how quick and easy it is to build kind of an application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you um, you know, where you sign up to a free account. We're going to create a corpus, which is, you know, like an index in, in Victoria terms. We're going to create an API key. Um, I'm going to upload a state of the union address text that, you know, from um, a few weeks ago uh, as a sample document. Uh, I'm going to run some queries and then I'm going to show you how to use one of our open source tools called Create UI to really generate a chatbot. And, you know, hopefully, It'll take, I have seven minutes, so hopefully I'll finish that in probably five. So let's, let's go. Um, so I'm going to go here first. Uh, you know, if you go to our, our sign-up page, you fill in a, a thing like this, you get an account, super easy. Uh, I'm going to not do that here. I'm just going to go instead to my account, uh, which is here. Uh, so I have an account. I got a couple of corpora. Um, and what I need to do here is just create a corpus. So um, you can choose a little bit of pre-configuration if you want or what type of uh, corpus it is. I'm probably going to make it a chat, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to decide later. I'm going to call it demo one, let's say. I can give it a description like this is a corpus for a demo in data console, whatever I want to say. Um, and boom, create a corpus. Now, um, and when you come here, uh, so this is our console. There's a lot of different things here which I'll, I'll address, but one of the nice things is we have built in a little bit of a data upload capability, which kind of makes it uh, for kind of initial experimentation pretty easy. So I can do this, and I have prepared this file here, which I literally downloaded HTML from. Uh, of course, this could be PDF or any type of file you want. You just upload the file. What happens here is, this console calls our indexing API to upload the file. I mean, it's, it's just you know, two lines of code that are hidden under a UI, but that's really what happened. So now the data is in the corpus. Uh, we have a little bit of an experimental kind of diagnosis tool here, so I can actually start asking some questions here. I can say this will be a chatbot, let's say, and I can say, what did the president say about the economy, right? And now it'll go and it'll um, do kind of a, a chatbot type interface on this data and it'll show you the present highlight of the remarkable. So you can read through that. And as you can see, there's also these, um, uh, like I said, citations that you can sort of look at. Now, this is how, um, this is in a console. So this is not really your app. You can kind of embed this into your own application. And so now 
what I'm going to do is show you how to build uh, an app. And there's multiple ways to do it. Of course, if you're a great UI you know, front-end person, you can do it yourself, no problem. But we also built some tools to help you out and get this accelerated. So one of those tools is this open source repository called um, Create UI uh, that you can use. And it's actually really easy to, to use. So what you do is you just run this uh, command, and I'll show you how to do that. So I have, I'm going to go here, I'm going to do this command. And let's hope that the demo goes with me today. Okay, so what happens here is just gives you, um, it's kind of like the, for those of you who, are, who know like React, Create App, it's kind of like the same thing. You get a couple of prompts, you answer a couple of questions, and you get an app really quickly. So here you can create different types of uh, form factors. Let's say I want to do a chat bot, so I'm going to pick this one. Uh, I want, uh, let's see, I want to use my own data because I uploaded the State of the Union address, so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to call it uh, Ask State of the Union of the Union. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, now I need to get my Victor customer ID, so I'm going to go back to my console. Customer ID is going to be right here. I'm going to copy that, put that here. Uh, now I need a corpus ID. The corpus ID is, uh, in this case, it's 19 here, so I'm going to pick that, copy that here. And then I need an API key. So the API key gives, of course, access to, to your account, to your corpus. In order to do that, I'm going to go to my access control, create an API key. I'm going to call it demo key or something. Um, and then uh, you can use one for just query, and there is also one you can use the, for indexing. In this case, we're just using it for the chatbot, so I'm going to give it query only, create the key. Um, now I can copy this key. Usually, we just, you would just go here and copy it. You know, it's the, the right way to do it. Uh, I'm going to put that in here. And then uh, you can suggest a couple of sample questions to put in the UI. Just for time, I'm going to skip that piece here. And that's it. So now uh, I go to ask state of the union. I run npm install. Uh, it installs all the necessary sort of components in, in uh, for the application. This might take uh, like a, a few seconds, <coughs> depending on the speed of the internet here. All right, come on. Can I take extra seconds for install? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> this will finish in a minute. So you're blaming NPM? Exactly. <laughs> okay, wouldn't, there wouldn't we go. The, wouldn't be the first. Okay, so now I do NPM run start. And with some luck, this will actually work. Okay. So it created a, an application in localhost 4444. And then I can say, yeah, here it is. That's the app, so I can do what did the president say about Ukraine? I talked about that too, right? Not the economy, so different question. So you get the same, and this is now your app. You can host it anywhere you want. You can, do, you can change it. It's, it. The code is there in the folder. You can just customize it. It just gives you like a, a basic framework. And again, gives you this, this fact. You can do a follow-up question. Uh, what should I ask it? Uh, are there any American soldiers there, right? And the, the nice thing I like to do about this follow-up question is because there now should mean Ukraine, right? It has the context of this chat, right? And so... Um, if I'm lucky, it'll, it'll know that it's Ukraine and, you know, um, the demo works. Uh, uh, yeah, so it kind of knows that the context and it works really fine. So um, uh, that's really the demo. Uh, and now I'm going to just uh, mention one more thing. Again, a couple of resources for you. We, we can share the slides that are on, but um, you can, again, sign up for the account, give it a try. We have a free plan that's pretty generous that you can try it out with, uh, our documentation, Discord channel, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're part of a startup, we also want to mention we have a startup program uh, that gives you a lot of benefits to get started quickly. And thank you for listening.